Um, my name is Tessa Decker, my husband, Steve Decker. We've been married for 33 years. Um, and at year 27, when he was 27 years old, he was diagnosed with type one diabetes. And that was two years into our marriage. Mm -hmm. And he, we were very active and exercised and he basically kept everything under control. And I was pregnant at the time. He was having all kinds of weird episodes when he was exercised, bonking and things like that. And all of a sudden in August, our son was born. And for two weeks after that, we weren't cooking. We weren't, you know, people were bringing us food in, things we normally didn't eat. And we quit exercising and type one diabetes symptom just I snapped mean, on yeah, him. Became acutely symptomatic. Um, Cause I was a cyclist. So that I think kept things under control. And if I look back, I could see probably for the last, probably two years prior to that, I was having symptoms, but because I rode virtually every day, the exercise was keeping it at bay. And we ate relatively healthy. We weren't, we weren't bad. Uh, I mean, we were eating kind of not the standard American diet, a slightly modified, but close to, <laughs> but um, we were vegetarian too. Yeah, his his yeah. family, um, his parents were Adventists, so they were vegetarian, uh, mainly mm -hmm. did a vegetarian diet. So it was healthier than the, the sad diet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I became, I mean, I became acutely symptomatic where I couldn't, uh, um, I, I, every 10 minutes I had to pee, I couldn't get 15 feet away from the hose and I would want to stick it in my mouth and drink until I was ready to throw up mm -hmm. and walk away. And I was thirsty again and had to pee again. And it was just all this stuff. So okay. he immediately went on insulin. Mm -hmm. And at the time there was no Humalog. It was regular, like ultra lentians, like a 30 some hour insulin. And it was challenging to control to say the least. Very challenging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No question. Mm -hmm. Um, but, and of course the ADA at the time says, Oh, you can ride a bike. You can ride six miles a day. I was like, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm just, just starting to get my legs warmed up then. I got a long way to go beyond that. So mm -hmm. I, I fought it, um, pretty hard. And I think I, I became pretty obstinate about not wanting to be a diabetic, but somebody who had diabetes. So I pushed myself to do things that normal people wouldn't do. And, um, and that really caused problems as far as hypoglycemic events. And, uh, so. Okay. So my, my history is fraught with hypoglycemic seizures, even though the rest of it is probably really good. My, my diabetic history otherwise is very good, but the, the, the seizure thing was not good. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you, you were having hypoglycemic seizures during this time? A lot. Yeah. yeah. So what yeah. were some of the things that you were doing? Can you give me examples of, um, like you just mentioned, things that were possibly making those worse? I think uh, exercising two extremes. Um, mm -hmm. I, would, I worked 12 hour shifts. So we worked at the hospital. So I would have seven days on seven days off in a two week period. My mm -hmm. often, often I would ride three, four, five hours. Um, and really it's a lot. Crush, yeah. And I, yeah. I would crush the mileage. Um, and there's really no way of knowing, at least at the time I didn't, I didn't understand how to know when my glycogen and, and glucagon stores were, were replenished. Your mm -hmm. blood sugar, show up and then all of a sudden your body goes for that store that's there and it's normal circadian rhythm it's not there and you just plummet and mm. uh, that's i was having just weird hypoglycemic stuff going on mm. yes yeah, so that must have been really scary yeah for you well, tessa too yeah thank yeah. goodness i'm a nurse so you mm -hmm. know i recognize them i still recognize them our journey has been uh pretty cool but tessa got um uh really into the whole food plant base which i i thought was really I completely understood, but now I travel, I cover 16 hospitals with a job I do. So I, I drive all over the place often and I really can't count on lunches and, and, and it, I was taking an easy way out, I guess, really. But, uh, um, I was still eating primarily vegetarian, but I was going to Taco Bell and getting three bean burritos. I would, uh, you know, I never passed chips and salsa when I, <laughs> I mean, I was eating better, but not really as well as I should. And I mm -hmm. think, um, but as we've, as Tessa got into the whole food plant-based thing, it was obvious that it was much better. Mm. Um, I look at the potential risk of uh, coronary artery disease to diabetics is extremely high. So looking at that, I, I could say, okay, this, this is something I really need to do. Mm. And Tess was knocking it out of the park with great food. I'd come home to unbelievable meals. I mean, just incredible stuff to eat. But uh, I finally, um, after we went to, we went to plant stock. Uh, uh -huh. for our second year and uh, listened to um, uh, Cyrus and Robbie who founded uh, masteringdiabetes.org and uh, absolutely changed my life. 
So, mm -hmm. so up until this point, you were eating a vegetarian diet. So that didn't change at all during the course of all of these years. Well, yeah, primarily veg. Although I, I, we would we would eat meat as our kids grew up it, it, and got older, it started becoming more difficult to do the vegetarian thing, as I'm sure a lot of families recognize. And uh, um, and so yeah, we you know we slipped down the easy path for a lot of things. So we we, we went back to eating meat for a while and. Um, uh, just because it was easier with kids, you know, especially as they hit well, they those early four, teen five, years. Six yeah. years old and, you know, kids, were, their other neighbors were eating chicken nuggets or whatever, you know, they start eating some and we start eating some. And then about, about 18, 19 years ago, I decided to go back and become a vegetarian. And that I lasted, I mean, I stayed vegetarian, haven't had it since, you know. Mm. Okay. And about four years ago, um, I was having some, my blood pressure was creeping up a little bit. My cholesterol is creeping up and, and still think I'm, I'm pretty healthy. And so I um, looked into some health things and stumbled upon, you know, thought, well, let me clean things up. So I went on a vegan diet mm -hmm. that was about four and a half, five years ago. And um, I found you because I was looking at um, Michael Greger, Dr. Greger's, and I saw an interview that you did with him. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, this lady she is fun so then I found clean food dirty girl and so about I guess it was early 2018 found your Facebook page went on the meal plans and he had gone vegan in December and so right around right when I found you in January when I went on the meal plans he goes you know that's all we're cooking and his insulin requirements dropped by 40 percent hmm. I mean it was quick very, very yeah. quick doing a whole food plant base, not just mm -hmm. vegan, you know, mm -hmm. where I was, I wasn't doing a lot of garden or fake meat, not a ton of them, but I was still doing some of them. Mm -hmm. And, um, once I went whole food plant base, um, it was a life changer for both of us, you know, for both of our health and, yeah. um, but for him, 40% decrease in insulin. Unbelievable. Yeah, that was cool. And then, you know, and then when I went on to the, to the, uh, mastering diabetes program, I cut it. I, I mean, I am, my insulin sensitivity is up over 500%. And yeah. it, it's amazing. I'm, I'm crushing carbs, very low fat, and very little insulin. I'm off my pump now. I don't use an insulin pump anymore. It's um, amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And yes. that's the only medication I'm pushing 16. The only medicine I'm on is my insulin. So that's, I feel pretty good about that. So the, the first thing that I want to touch base on is just you know, we hear in, in our community and in, you know, other people's whole food plant-based communities, we hear often that people who are type two diabetic can, you know, with lifestyle changes and with eating a whole food plant-based diet can, you know, get their numbers down and possibly get off from, uh, you know, their diabetes drugs. We don't hear that often from people with type one diabetes who are able to do this. And I imagine part of that is because there's a lot more people with type two diabetes than there is with type one diabetes. Uh, so can you talk a little bit about, because you both are, are obviously in the medical profession. So can you talk a little bit about the difference between type one diabetes and type two diabetes as you understand it? And a little bit like, okay, that's my first question. Let's just start there. You want to take that? Yeah. So type one diabetic, um, my husband um, produces no insulin. His islet cells have just shut down. They, he produces none. So with, um, so he has to have insulin, has to have insulin to survive. Um, and since so we found out through the meal plans and through some other things, cutting fats and things through mastering diabetes, there's other ways to control that and increase your insulin, insulin sensitivity. Um, so that's type one. Type two is more of an insulin resistance type. Um, it's, uh, I mean, we always say, you know, there's other, other causes, but it's a foodborne illness, you know, <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it is. It is. I have family members. I have friends with it, you know, I'm trying to get them on this, on this train and it's a little difficult, but it is, it's a, most of it's foodborne illness. We have a neighbor who has, um, type two because of the chemicals, um, he was exposed to during the Vietnam war, but that's an outlier. That's not your typical type two mm. person. And he's um, lean body habitus the whole bit. And he's, yeah, his, his is definitely not necessarily foodborne illness, but the same, he can have the same effect that the whole food plant-based diet, low fat, high carb will have the same effect on him as it has on every other person with, whether it's gestational diabetes, type one, pre-diabetes, type two diabetes, type 1.5, 
it'll have the same effect on all of us. And it's, so it's, it, it, it does cover everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Same, same blanket meal plan. I mean, what he's doing for type one is the same thing you'd treat a type two. Mm -hmm. That's been this frustrating part is, you know, we've we're tied to the medical profession, you know, nurse, I've worked with endocrinologists and, you know, they don't, they don't teach you this. They teach you, you know, the American Diabetes Association teaches you lower carb, higher protein. And when he found out he can eat all this fruit, he said, you've got to be kidding me. What? You want me to eat how many grams of carbs <laughs> in the morning and how many pieces of fruit? Yes. Well, that was going to be my next question. So when you discovered this, how, how shocked were you both to, to find out that it's been kind of backwards? You're not just you're thinking about it, but the whole medical community is thinking about it. And the things that they say, you know, don't do that is actually the stuff that can help. I mean, what, what was your reaction to it? Was there some sort of, uh, you know, is there any like frustration that goes along with that? I imagine there would be a little. Absolutely. I think there's a lot of frustration, obviously. Um, and working in the medical profession, you think, okay, are we part of something that's nefarious here? Which I don't believe we are. I think our endocrinologists are great people and they're doing what they're taught, but they're not yeah. taught nutrition in med school. Um, they're, they're taught which meds to, to provide and, and how to take care of the symptoms that come up with diabetes. But we're not talking about the cause and what we can do to reverse that. And that's frustrating. All the physicians that I talk to, and I, and I work with physicians every day, um, are amazed at what I'm doing. They see me eating breakfast and they see me, and I'll, I'll, this morning I had to about 225 grams of carb and fruit for breakfast. And that's more than I would have uh, in a day and a half yeah, of eating prior. Two days. Yeah, two days. Um, and I just, I crush it. And I'm taking so little insulin to cover it. It's, it's pretty amazing. And they're, they're shocked, but when they look at my numbers and see what's happened to me, the fact that I've, I mean, I've dropped about, eh, about 28 pounds and um, not, not trying, but it's been a side effect. Uh, so I think people notice and they, they, you know, they know me, they see that I'm feeling great and they're, I don't have a pump on anymore. And uh, I, think, I think everyone in the medical community that I've talked to is very surprised. And everyone I've talked to is unaware of the actual truth about what we need to be doing as diabetics. Type one, type two, whatever. Um, yeah, it's frustrating. And they're all it calling us. I mean, they're yeah. all calling us. You know. Oh, it's yeah. You know, you know. They ask him, "What does your wife cook?" You know, or he brings in food and where and you know, you know, he gives my them my email, and so I'm getting lots yeah. of phone calls because they're interested now. Um, you know, we're we live outside of Charlotte, and there are a lot of physicians that are on this train now. Um, mm. A neurosurgeon. There's a couple cardiologists that are they're they're seeing it. You know, and, and uh, they're like, how can we get this message out to people? And I think it's things like this. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I totally agree. It has to be, it has to come from this, you know, and this is exactly why I wanted to talk to you guys. And, and I put out that call to, you know, the community. Hey, I want to talk to you if you've been able to you know, have some success with your di managing your diabetes with this way of eating, because it's so backwards from what most people think. I mean, it's the exact opposite than yes. what most people think. And Every person that I've talked to, and, and Grant, I did talk to one other physician a few weeks ago who was type 2 diabetic and who managed to get her diabetes totally under control with this way of eating and with our meal plans. But other than that, they're you know, just regular people. And when they first start this way of eating, they're so scared. They don't trust that they can have a potato, that they can have fruit, that they can have beans. And then as they see... I can have fruit and I can do this and I can get to the like cause of this, right? Then all of a sudden their whole world, is, their whole mind is just blown because it's just, it goes against everything that they've ever been told. And you're right. It's not, you know, the doctors are doing their job. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not, you know, I, and I don't want to, you know, it's just, they're doing their job and they just, they don't know. And that's kind of cool that you guys are in the profession that you're in and have been able to do this because I think that more people will take note and take that seriously yeah. just because of who it's coming from, because you're one of them. Right. Well, my last job, I worked with um, a cardiologist in an outpatient setting um, as, an, as his RN. And um, so we were doing nuclear stress tests, you know, stress echoes and patients were coming in and going to the hospital for stints and this, that, and the other. And so, you know, that patients would come in and, you know, 
he'd put them on, you know, a statin and something, an ACE inhibitor, something else for their blood pressure, two or three medications. He's like, oh, doc, what else can I do? You know, what, what can I, can I do? Diet, exercise? He's like, absolutely. He says, you know what? I'm going to let you talk to my nurse though, because she knows a little bit more about it than I do. So I would tell patients, here's the Mediterranean diet that I'm supposed to give you. But I had a stack of what the, you know, what um, the eat to live. Eat to live, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dr. Furman. Say, what yeah. the hell? <laughs> <laughs> but eat to live. So I said, you know, take the book home, read it, tell me what you think about it, you know, but it, it, this will change your life. And, um, you know, some of them did, some of them came back like, you are crazy, you know, I'm not, no cheese and no eggs and no meat, you know, but, um, but that was way back then. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. but it was proof in the pudding that he just, he had no experience in it, you know, and he was a wonderful physician. A very bright wonderful. guy, but yeah, but there's no, and he, he will say no training. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And it can sound kind of drastic, but at the same time, you know, I don't know. Seizures are pretty drastic too. And, and being on medication your whole life is kind of drastic too. So I think there's, you know, it, yeah, not eating milk and eggs and dairy isn't all that drastic when you, especially when you get used to it, it's, can be delicious and you don't even miss it if it's if it's done the right way that's kind of my first question was there a period where you kind of miss the cheese and miss the eggs and all of that yeah missing cheese that that, yeah. that was i think cheese i think was the most difficult thing to to give up yeah. um cheese and eggs um yeah but um finally i mean once you give them up i mean i can't imagine eating either of those right now mm -hmm. i mean I imagine i have no desire none at all how long did that take you to get to that point? Not long. Once I, once, I mean, and within two or three days of eating like nutrient dense, whole food, plant-based, mm -hmm. you feel amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah your you're energy your level, yeah. your thought process, your brain's clear. You, you just have spring in your step. Yeah. We, we noticed things. The thing, the thing that I was doing um, on, on the mastering diabetes program, Cyrus and Robbie have you do what's called a decision tree. And so everything you're eating, you're, you're both, uh, we use an app. And you put absolutely everything you eat chronometer in. App. The chronometer puts mm -hmm. it down. Exact carbs, fats, everything. In the first day, I saw my insulin requirements drop dramatically. In three first days, day, yeah, one yeah. day. And I, I thought, okay, this is going to take a long time for my physiology to adapt. As yeah. soon as you get that out, your system says, "Hey, I, your body's amazing. It wants to work the way it's supposed to yes. work." And yes. It starts immediately. And within one week, I was taking fifty percent of the insulin I was, and I was mm -hmm. like. Now, so then you're then you're on fire. Now you're motivated, yeah. and and I, was, I think for a while I was probably eating too little fat. I was getting maybe six to eight grams a day total. I was mm -hmm. like, man, I don't want it. I want to see how far I get on this insulin sensitivity. Yeah. So it was easy to do because it is it's self perpetuating motivation. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Once you start seeing results, you just want to keep going. And why would you go back? <laughs> yeah. With what you guys are putting on, my goodness, I you know people say, oh, I would miss this, miss that. And a lot of the co my coworkers give me grief, you know, what kind of rabbit food you bring today, Decker, and I'll bring it, but we bring extra so I can, and I'll have a, you know, plastic food, whatever, try this, try that. Nice. Like, oh, that's great. Oh, what mm -hmm. is that? And then I give them Tessa's, you know, email address to get a hold of her, <laughs> you know, what she's made. Yeah. But people try it. And it's like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. I think you, let's face it, the thought is, oh, you're going to eat lettuce all day. And totally. 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 Yeah. Yeah, that's it. You're going to eat like a rabbit. You're going to eat grass. You're going to eat salads. That's it. I mean, that is the thought. And if I, let's face it, like if I had to eat salads every day, I wouldn't want to do this either. Right, right. <laughs> you know, there has to be some, you know, some, some stuff that you can bite into and there has, it's, you know, diverse and there's so many options. That's the thing that really gets me is that people always assume that, Hey, but you're so limited when you eat this way. And I say it's the exact opposite because the amount of combinations you can come up with beans alone, just the variety of beans, like there are yeah. thousands of them. <laughs> yes. And your sauces that go with it. Unbelievable. Sauces. Right. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's definitely, you know, having solid yummy recipes is definitely a, a important part in all of this for sure. So you make some modifications to the meal plans, correct? So you do, can you talk about the modifications that you make? I do. So for him, um, you know, after following the clean, the, the, um, clean food, dirty girl program, he dropped his insulin 40%, mm -hmm. then added mastering diabetes. He learned from two type one diabetics. One's a physician 
and the other one has his masters. And so they've been doing this a lot longer. And so that's when they're like, cut your fats back. So mm -hmm. like, Hmm, how can we do this? And I do the tahini on the potatoes and things like that, but some of the creamy dressings, instead of using all cashews, I'll use, I tried to use all be all beans and no cashews and it, <laughs> it totally changes. Like, you know, I mean, it was okay, but it just didn't have that, you know, good, good. Mm. That so mouth feel of fat. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And we need fat. We do need some fat. Yeah. So I would take like half, half um, white beans and half cashews or sometimes I'll do um, half hemp seeds because hemp seeds don't seem to bother blood sugar as much as cashews. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So it's just, it just, we've been playing around with, with things like that. Um, or mm -hmm. if something, if there's a, something that requires the sauce for lunch and maybe tofu for dinner, we'll do one or the other and I'll do a different kind of dressing with just like Dijon and some kind of um, taste, tasty vinegar. Mm -hmm. um, use that for his sauce on top of his um, meal instead. And I'll do yeah. all the creamy dressings myself. <laughs> no, it's fantastic. I mean, my, my thing is I found my trigger point seems to be about 30 and 34 grams of fat a day. Okay. If I go over there, I see a significant change in my insulin sensitivity. Mm, I interesting. That, I'm, I'm yeah. doing great. And the crazy thing is the best days I've had when I've been like my total, and this is getting stupid, my, my total carb insulin ratio, when I get up, I think the highest I've been is uh, 31 to one total for the entire day. And that was eating unbelievable amount of carbs, like, like 580 grams of carb for the day mm. and very little fat. And for whatever reason, the more carbs I eat and you reduce that fat, your insulin sensitivity goes through the roof. But I have to be careful if I do something with tofu and a cream sauce, I know I'm going to jack it up. And you know, like Robbie and Cyrus will tell you in the program, in the program that I'm in the mastering diabetes, Eat what you want to eat, but take notes on everything you do so yeah. you're not blindsided by it. Mm -hmm. So I took notes on everything I ate to see what would happen. And I know that my ratio is going to change if I do that. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about, ratio, you're talking about normally he was doing one unit of insulin for every 10 grams of carbs mm -hmm. for, for three years. Yeah. And then now he's doing. Yeah, now in the morning when I wake up, um, I ride every morning. So uh, in the morning I do uh, 60 to 1 for. Mm -hmm. for for breakfast. 60 grams of carbs for one unit of insulin. Um, and it used to be 10. 10, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, about 40, 45 to one for lunch and 55 to one at dinner. And there's that, I found I found the variation, but that works great. Mm -hmm. That's really mm -hmm. interesting. Bre his breakfast, tell him about your breakfast. He, this is what he eats for breakfast every morning. Yeah, so my breakfast is usually one to two mangoes, two bananas, uh, two cups of strawberries. I had a couple of blueberries, a couple of raspberries, um, three. <laughs> Uh, I had three uh, um, uh, kiwi, green kiwi, one uh, sun gold kiwi, my tablespoon of flaxseed, tablespoon of, tablespoon of chia seed, and that was breakfast. That's one breakfast. That's one breakfast. breakfast yeah. I can't eat a, all that. It's in a big old Jethro size bowl. Massive. <laughs> but, I mean, oh, he, yeah. wouldn't, he wouldn't eat that in two weeks before with the American Diabetes Association. For but sure. Yeah. I mean, they have people scared of them, and they're nutrient dense. Yeah. Oh, so blueberries. I forgot the blueberries. Got to have blueberries. Okay. Blueberries. Okay. Good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, the, the nutrients in these foods that you're now eating are the same nutrients that are going to do so many more awesome things. It's like, you know, and a lot of plant-based doctors talk about it, but the, the diet that's good for, for diabetes is the diet that's good for heart disease. And it's all, you know, in the brain and for, you know, anti-cancer and anti-inflammatory. And it's the same diet. It's the same thing. And so not only are people who, don't, you know, are afraid of fruit, you know, they're, they're missing out on all those wonderful nutrients, you know, and phytochemicals and vitamins and minerals and all the fiber. So it's, it's, um, if you told your breakfast to most people who are type one diabetic, they would, they wouldn't probably believe you. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's like the physicians he's working with. These cardiologists are looking at it. And then, so Steve brings his numbers in his decision tree. He's like, look at what's happening. Mm. Look what's happening to yeah. me. And my lab numbers are, you know, ridiculously good, which I'm glad for, you know, my lipid profiles, everything looked fantastic. Um, Hemoglobin yeah. A1C. Yeah. Everything. Like 5.8 ish. Yeah. You know, so I mean, highest we've had since th these plans is six. That's the highest we've had. So when you switched over to, specifically whole food plant-based because that is different than vegan and i think a lot of people who are new to this way of eating maybe don't don't 
get that connection yet. And whole food plant-based, we're talking about whole plant food, foods, nothing, right. nothing processed. Um, well, some, some, you know, minimally processed food, maybe like tofu or tempeh or those things. Mm -hmm. So when you switched over, Tessa, did you see things change with your numbers or your weight or your kind of overall health? Absolutely. The reason why I switched over was I was on, I was a nurse manager of a medical ICU for years and years and years and had terrible GERD, had bad reflux. Mm -hmm. So I went on a proton pump inhibitor and I couldn't get off of it. And I stayed on it for years, went to my gastroenterologist and just would wake up at three in the morning. If I ever tried to get off of it, terrible, terrible burning. And so finally I read a book, I can't remember who it was, some um, whole food plant-based guy. And he's like, if you're on a proton pump inhibitor, if you've not had a gastric bleeding ulcer, get off of it and just suffer for two weeks. You're going to suffer and switch mm -hmm. to a vegan diet. So that's what I did. I went vegan and went off the omeprazole, but it wrecked my gut. It, mm -hmm. I had, you know, the SIBO, you know, all the bad stuff, went to functional medicine doctor and corrected all that. But my issues was inflammation because my gut was such a wreck. I had terrible inflammation. Like I mm -hmm. would wake up in the morning, plantar fasciitis bilateral Achilles tendonitis, I had a ten, tendonitis in my elbow mm. and, and I was eating what I thought was healthy, but my gut was wrecked from taking that, you know, pill, the proton pump inhibitor for years. Mm. So it wasn't until I fixed that. And then that's when I did the whole food plant base, but my blood pressure was creeping up. My cholesterol was creeping up. Um, I probably dropped 25, 30 pounds, um, just whole food plant based. And now I mean, you could see me squat on the floor and jump up with my grandkids. I watch, you know, watch, you know, our two grandsons and I just feel like I'm 20 years old again. I don't hurt at all. There's all that inflammation is gone, 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 gone. And I would get up in the morning and act like an old lady to shuffle to the bathroom. because Everything hurt. Mm -hmm. but it's gone. Yeah. Totally gone. Amazing change. Amazing change in her physiology when that happened. Eating just plants. That's it. Food is medicine. So basic, right? So, so basic and so simple and so effective. And it, and you know, I really like Steve, what you said earlier, the body is meant to work. And I truly believe that. And if you give it the right fuel and you give it the right stuff, the body wants to work. We're not designed to, to, to have these bodies that are, that are, you know, in pain and inflamed and not working. You know, the body wants to do its job. And so if we can just cut out the bullshit <laughs> and yeah. feed it what it needs, then the body works for us. And so what an amazing journey that you both have been on. And so I want to see, before we wrap up, Tell me what a day, so you, you talked about your breakfast, but I want to hear kind of a day in the life of Steve in food, breakfast, lunch, dinner. What do you got uh, going on? Breakfast, like I said, I kill the fruit, absolutely crush fruit. Yep. Lunch is usually one of your guys' great recipes. I mean, so it's either talking power ball, we're, we're talking, you know, yeah, yeah, rice and beans and, and, and veggies. And one of the other things you were talking about getting used to eating this way, I was amazed at how it takes some time, but your palate changes to where now it's like seven or eight different leafy green vegetables. Each one of them is so unique. And I'm like, so look good. forward to each specific one. Right. I'm, not, I'm not inundated with salt and fat all the time. Now it's right. like, oh, stuff is great. But we do a lot of, uh, uh, so potato squash, um, uh, all types of really good things for lunch. And um, we come home and usually, usually lunch will be leftovers from dinner. Like leftovers from tonight will be lunch tomorrow. Then I'll get home and whatever she's, whatever you guys have come up with and she's made, I'm I'm ready to chow on uh, in the evening. Yeah, I batch and for four. So even though it's just two of us, we're empty dusters. I batch for four. So he has lunch every single day. So we pack his lunch every day. He has, you know, and it's a it's usually it usually yeah. a grain, usually a green, and usually beans or tofu, um, in some kind of combination. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isn't it amazing how the palate changes? Like, isn't that a cool thing to experience and how, and I love it. Like each leafy green has its own taste. Yes. That's so spot on. And, and for most people who, who are just transitioning to this way, either the, it's going to take them a minute, but they, but eventually you do like each food has its own unique taste. And when you get sugar out of your diet, like you can taste the sweetness in, in food, you know, and that's the sweetness that your body wants. Like it wants that fruit and, and sweet potatoes, but you can really taste like such what, like it's an amazing thing to be able to taste 
your food. Like really taste the food. Exactly. Yes. So yes. cool. Broccoli, the sweetness of broccoli. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Unreal. Mm -hmm. Just that stuff, you know, until you dive into this. And totally. Crave it. Yes, I know. And I think that people who, who haven't experienced this must think that we're crazy. You know, craving broccoli, what? But you only get it when you, when you go through it. And yes, it happens. I crave broccoli all the time. Yeah. 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 I mean, arugula, I mean, like, like you know, I'm, and I, I love that peppery taste of arugula. And sometimes it's like, you know, you get a salad, but I'm just, I, no, I want arugula. I want to I have that. Mm -hmm. It's weird how, and I'm sure there's some phytonutrient in my body saying, let's get a little more of that. Yeah. But your body recognizes it and lets you know, hey, that's what you want. But man, is it good. Yes. Yes. This is all, this is so much about getting in tune with the body. And, and the more you eat like this, the more in tune you get. And you just, you have this beautiful relationship with your body, I feel like people who eat a standard American diet, they're very disconnected from, from their body. And also, you know, just, just even recognizing when you're hungry, you know, something as simple as that, like eating this way really kind of recalibrates that hunger system that you, that your body naturally has built in, you know? Right. So I don't know. Other, I think it's really cool. I think it is awesome about this diet is that I can, it's not about portion control at all. No. I eat, and sometimes I think, oh my gosh, it's time to eat again. You got to be kidding me. I'm still, I'm still full. But you can just crush food. So yeah. if somebody who just has, oh, I can't, I, can't, I can't handle portion control, man, welcome to the whole food plant-based diet then, brother. You're going to jump on that and not even think about portion control. And like I say, my weight loss was purely a side effect. It wasn't anything I was yeah. trying to do. I mean, I've weighed course it's distributed differently now than it was when I was younger but I pretty much weighed around 225 for the last 30 plus years and um He's now six, three and a half now I'm down mm -hmm. I'm down to 190 and mm -hmm. feel fantastic I, I ride a peloton every day my power numbers are excellent I mean I you know feel like I'm 30 again and uh awesome. it's, but it, it's food yeah bottom line <laughs> agreed I'm, I'm yeah yeah. Well, I'm so honored that you shared your story with me and I'm really, I'm so, so happy for you guys. You know, I, I really am. It's like, what a new, what a new lot on life you both have. So liberating. Yeah. And so for liberating. me, not worried about him with his blood sugar of 30, driving a car, running around or, you know, it's been liberating. I just, it just, it's been wonderful. Yeah. It really has been. It's just, yeah a new lease on life and i mean i, I did the uh, mastering diabetes thing i started that august 9th mm -hmm. and i have not had a significant hypoglycemic event since august 9th longest in my diabetic career <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah i'm looking at life now thinking uh, as i near fixed income one of these years um not having to worry about the pump is without That's insurance will save me fifteen hundred dollars a month yeah uh, require insulin has gone through the roof it's terrible would it my insulin hasn't changed since 1992 as far as the formulary but it's up 1700 percent in cost um and so i look at that and say i've dropped so much of my requirements that i, I look at it, it's like man we're, we're in good shape we're gonna be we're gonna be doing just fine when mm -hmm. retirement hits yeah not, not like that. yeah that's and a whole other thing huh yeah, yeah it is and eating this way your health is going to be so much better you'll be able to do so much more enjoy so much more yeah, and that's a blessing for, and you, you both have, you have kids, right? Yes. How awesome is it for your kids to see their parents thriving? And they're taking note. Our son's a short up firefighter, and he's got a few of the firefighters interested in it. And our daughter and son-in-law are leaning this way too. So, um, leading by example. They're yeah. watching. They're like, hmm, take a note. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's the, that's the best we can do is lead by example, you know, and I think that you two are a beautiful example of what this lifestyle can do. And I really just want to thank you for, for talking with me today and for sharing your story. I can't wait to put this out and for everybody to watch it. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. Well, thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you for all you do. And your team is amazing. Uh, I agree. I think that we have the best team ever. So thank you very much for being part of this awesome community and for just being the change and for helping spread this amazing, you know, information that sh shouldn't be all that amazing. Cause like you, we said, like, it's just food, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So simple. In its simplest form. Yeah. 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 That's right. All right. Well, you guys, thank you so much. Have an awesome evening. Thanks Molly. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.